Welcome back. Boston Motorsports here in Brighton, Massachusetts invited me down to drive this 2020 Alfa Romeo Stelvio. It's Verde Visconti metallic green. And I'd assume if PTSRS were to option out his, this is probably what he'd do. So these are like ultra practical sort of like, I don't want to call them mom mobiles because they're not, they look way cooler. This is not, this is not just what a boring person drives. You, you buy this because you've got a little bit of style. You, you want to be noticed, but you don't want to be flashy. You're just looking for something that's reasonably priced, but also not boring. And that's what this car does. It gets you out of the realm of the typical German lifestyle. Everyone has the BMW. Everyone has the Audi and the Mercedes. Why not mix it up a little bit? Inside, pretty nice sporty seats. And we've got this beautiful steering wheel with the start stop button on that. Mirrors going out, very cool. Let's get some light in here. That is a lot of fabric, oh my God. And I think it goes back further. Look at that. I'm about it, I like that. All of Alpha's new cars are just very driver focused. They're just meant to be driver's cars and they have a spot for everything. So I love that there's a cubby hole for my key. I love that there's a nice cubby hole with the charging pad for my phone. Everything just makes sense. There's no extras and I don't have to keep the key in my pocket. That's a big one. And I've got the Italian flag here. I'm Italian, so I can appreciate that a little bit. Around back, let's see how this rear leg room is. Pretty simple bench, nothing crazy. I mean, we're not looking at the lap of luxury back here, but it does the job. So, you know, you can certainly put people here. And there's not a sense of claustrophobia because you've got all of this light coming in through the roof. But I will say it's probably very important that you spec out your Stelvio to look the way you want it because although the overall shape and design is really pleasing, when you do it right and you get the right accents and you, you do the right color wheels with all of the matching stuff, you know, this in chrome would not look very good on this spec. Under the hood, we've got that familiar four-cylinder turbo that we saw in the Julia, 280 horsepower, and it gets the job done with an eight-speed ZF gearbox. It does a pretty good job of staying in the power band. But enough about that, let's go for a drive. This one has the sport wheel, so we get these killer aluminum paddles. You gotta have the aluminum paddles in your Italian car, man. Column mounted, very cool. So the thing I liked about the Giulia most was that it felt like a playful, driver-focused car, and I didn't have to adapt to it. It just, it just did the thing. Now this one, I know that was a little aggressive. This one doesn't have the adaptive suspension. This is fixed, but it does have sport tuned front dampers. So it is designed to be a little sporty, uh, but you'll notice that's where you get the lack of that center button in the DNA. So let's put it in the D mode dynamic. You know, this 280 horsepower four cylinder, while it's not crazy potent, it is plenty of power. It's gonna do what you need it to do. It doesn't feel underpowered in any way. And it's, it is really nice when you drive a car that's like cohesive. It all feels right. You can get the crazy fast one. They do make a 500 horsepower version of this, the Quadrifoglio, which uh, seems a little overkill for the segment. But hey, I am never going to complain about more power. Really nice seamless shifts from the ZF8 speed, which has just become the industry standard. It's incredible how DCTs basically got phased out because gearboxes like this exist. You can use your paddles and it's just lightning fast. It's absolutely crazy that this is like the norm for automatic transmissions. Can this do a U-turn? Going to find out. Oh yes. That's what you want from your city SUV. I'm taking you through the city because I think a lot of the small SUV owners are, are city dwellers. They're people who need the space, but they also can't afford to just have a Tahoe or a Suburban as far as parking is concerned. That's not going to work for these people. But if you've got a family and you still need to go to the grocery store and pick up like, you know, furniture and stuff that you're buying for your apartment, you know, the Stelvio is going to do just that. And when I think about a city car, I want something that 
is comfortable that I can get over the bumps, but also agile because I want to be able to place it in traffic. I don't want to have to think about, you know, some big cumbersome truck thing that I'm not comfortable with. Whereas with this, I feel like I know exactly where the corners of my car are and I can place it on the road really nicely. I like that Alpha gives you the correct size steering wheel. It's not some tiny, tiny boy racer thing and it's not crazy thick. I think the Germans have gone a little nuts on the thickness of their steering wheels and it's just uncomfortable. I, I do wanna be able to wrap my hand around it. And this leather wrap steering wheel is the correct size. And they're gauges. I'm not trying to figure out what's going on in front of me. There's not a million computer screens. Yes, I have a menu that I can change around and I can I can observe my G meters and you know all the fun things that come along with FCA products we like we like to have a G meter so let's make sure that uh, FCA continues doing things like that that is entertaining but I can put my big speed right in front of me I've got my fuel economy it tells me my drive mode and I have an analog tack and an analog speedometer critical man I love that stuff that's what we like that's what car people like and over the bumps yeah it's not a Cadillac is that still the gold standard no we should be saying it's not an s-class it's just funny how that's part of the vernacular. But you do feel it, but it's not jarring. I don't feel like my teeth are about to fall out. There are there are other cars. We won't mention what they are, but <laughs> then you put them in sport mode and you're like, oh my God, if I hit this bump, things bad things are going to happen. NSX. When you're driving in Boston and Cambridge, you can never be too, co oh, see, look at all this. We don't want to have problems. So another, another point for the Stelvio, I dig the brakes. <laughs> and I look way cooler than a CRV, that's for sure. Wow, it's beautiful out here today. Don't you just love narrow roads? See, I guess this is an Italian car. It's, it's meant to be on narrow city roads. That's its thing. I'm just happily complying with that. Classic Boston, always doing work, the roads are never good. Those of you who are keen will recognize that I'm actually in Cambridge and you'll be very mad at me that I called this Boston. We'll head across Mass Ave, what a beautiful view. I'm in a beautiful car. Very cool day. This is kind of like if you had a GTI as an SUV. Yeah, that's a good comparison actually. I'm proud of that. And I, and I think it's doing its job in, in kind of just being a part of me, right? I, I don't feel like I have to worry about it. I don't feel like I'm adapting to it. I just jumped in this car. You're watching every mile I'm putting on this thing. Look, another Alpha up there. And I, that's, that's, that's a, a point, right? When a car doesn't require you to adapt to it, that means that it was tuned very well from the factory. Whoever built this car, whoever designed this car, built it to be meant for a driver. And a lot of cars today, you get in and the steering's really vague. And although the steering's very light, I wouldn't call it vague, but you have to calibrate yourself. I, I didn't feel like I had to do really any calibration to be part of this car, to enjoy this car. And not very many cars make me want to go drive in the city. It's usually a nightmare when I have to drive a car in the city because all I'm thinking about is pothole awareness. It's very frustrating, but this is actually pretty easy, pretty tame. It's absorbing the things. I feel like I could, I mean, honestly, it would be an expensive Uber, but I could use this as an Uber if I had to. I'm definitely not overburdened with stuff. Its design is simple. You know, it's elegant, it's beautiful, but it's not cluttered. Everything is just the way it is. And I love that I can reach forward and change things when I want to. I had a BMW X7 the other day, and it was actually kind of cumbersome. When I wanted to change the channel on the, on the radio, or if I wanted to adjust my HVAC system, I felt like I was really hunting for buttons. There was a lot of stuff going on in there and yes you can you can make the argument that if you own a car you'll definitely get used to it and you'll you'll grow into that pattern however 
I don't always want to grow into a pattern. Sometimes I just want to like, it, I just want it to be so abundantly clear and that's good design language. So cheers to Alpha for excellent design language inside the vehicle. Gives me that one, two upshift very quickly, probably in an attempt to save fuel. Not something I'm very good at. I can look up at all the buildings when I'm in here and I don't have to be like, oh, you missed it. No, nope, it's right there. Got beat off the line by an A3. Damn shame. So does the Stelvio wow me? Not really, it doesn't wow you because that's not what it's designed to do. It's supposed to be something you look back at because it's beautiful and it's easy to love from an aesthetic standpoint. But as a driver and a chassis and all of the goods in the engineering department, I feel like it's just designed to become one with the driver. And that's exactly what it does. I don't feel overwhelmed by anything, whether it's the power or the steering or the brakes. It's capable in all those departments and I don't really have to think about them. I just drive the car. I'm going through cumbersome Boston traffic and I'm in comfort. I don't feel like I'm concerned about where I'm going to throw or place this car. And while I'm going over these bumps and navigating traffic and listening to people beep at me because they don't know how to drive, I also can just hit buttons. I don't have to worry about like, oh, where's the thing? I know where the thing is. I don't have to look. It's straight in front of me. I can get some air conditioning going and it's, it's just wonderful. So big thank you to Boston Motorsports here in Brighton, Mass for letting me play around with this today. I know it's not some bonker sports car, but you know what? You've got to drive everything to understand where cars are going in the market. You know, Alpha is a new and kind of growing brand in America and it would be a shame to just ignore them because they're different or because they're not BMW, because they're not Mercedes, because they're not Audi. And there are other options. I think those kind of tend to be the very usual business suit. But what this does do is it gives you a nice stylish place to be that I think the Germans don't necessarily offer. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive and a monster thank you to Boston Motorsports here in Brighton, Massachusetts.